apply ru pressure to Russia for humanitarian issues in an effective manner without starting another Cold War? First of all, I say I don't think uh, we're not going to have another Cold War uh, with, with Russia. But have no doubt that Russia's behavior is certainly outside the norms of behavior that we would expect for nations which are very wealthy as Russia has become because of their petrodollars. Now, long ago, I warned about Vladimir Putin. I said I looked into his eyes and saw three letters, a K, a G, and a B. He has surrounded himself with former KGB apparatchiks. He has gradually repressed most of the liberties that we would expect for nations to observe. And he has exhibited most aggressive behavior, obviously in Georgia, said before, watch Ukraine. Ukraine right now is in the sights of Vladimir Putin. Those that want to reassemble the old Soviet Union. We've got to show moral support for Georgia. We've got to show moral support for Ukraine. We've got to advocate for their membership in NATO. We have to make the Russians understand that there are penalties for this kind of behavior. This kind of naked aggression into Georgia, a tiny country and a tiny, tiny democracy. And so, of course, we want to bring international pressures to bear on Russia in hopes that that will modify and eventually change their behavior. Now, the G8 is one of those, but there are many others. But the Russians must understand that these kinds of, uh, of actions and activities are not acceptable, and hopefully we will use the leverage, economic, diplomatic, and others, and united with our allies, with our allies and friends in Europe who are equally disturbed as we are about their recent behavior. Senator Obama? It will not be a reignition of the Cold War, but Russia is a challenge. Senator Obama? We're winding now so we can keep track of the time. Well. The resurgence of Russia is one of the central issues that we're going to have to deal with uh, for, uh, in the next presidency. And for the most part, I agree with Senator McCain uh, on many of the steps that have to be taken, but we can't just provide moral support. We've got to provide moral support to the Poles and Estonia and Latvia and, and all the nations that were former Soviet satellites, but we've also got to provide them with financial and concrete assistance to help rebuild their economies. Uh, Georgia, in particular, is now brink of enormous economic challenges. And some say that that's what Putin intended in the first place. The other thing we have to do, though, is we've got to see around the corner. <coughs> we've got to anticipate some of these problems ahead of time. You know, back in April, I put out a statement saying that the situation in Georgia was unsustainable because you had Russian peacekeepers in these territories that were under dispute. And you knew that if the Russians themselves were trying to obtain some of these territories or push back against Georgia, that that was not a stable situation. So part of the job of the next commander-in-chief in keeping all of you safe is making sure that we can see some of the 21st century challenges and anticipate them before they happen. We haven't been doing enough of that. We tend to be reactive. That's what we've been doing over the last eight years. And that has actually made us more safe. That's part of what happened in Afghanistan, where we rushed into Iraq, and Senator McCain and President Bush suggested that it wasn't that important to catch bin Laden right now, and that we could muddle through. And that has cost us dearly. We've got to be much more strategic if we're going to be able to deal with all the challenges that we face out there. And one last point I want to make about Russia, energy is going to be key in dealing with Russia. If we can reduce our energy consumption, that reduces the amount of petrodollars that they have to, to make mischief around the world. That will strengthen us and weaken them when it comes to issues like Georgia.